Hi, and welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. Today we are talking about something that I personally have been um, really dealing with um, a lot lately, and it is navigating anxiety. And when I think about anxiety, I think about the scripture, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And um, in this season of my life, I have been dealing with a lot of anxiety. So I am super excited to have my therapist, Miss Delana Zimmerman, who is going to help all of us. I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with it in different ways. And you may not even know that you're dealing with it or be able to pinpoint what is this feeling that I'm feeling. But today um, we're going to talk about some things and share some things that I'm going through and that you've helped me with, Delana. Um, so first let's, um, get into how can people pinpoint like what anxiety is? Cause I know for me, like now that I know what anxiety is, I'm able to pinpoint it, but I didn't realize I've been having anxiety pretty much all my life, but I didn't realize it. Yeah. I, um, thank you for having me. Yes. So, um, you know, anxiety has now become household language, like it's layperson language. It's really interesting that we're now speaking out of the uh, diagnostic manual, mm. of, you know, um, in our homes. But we used to call anxiety worry. Wow. Right. That's mm -hmm. what our mothers called. It's what our grandmothers said. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm worried about you. Yes. You know, I'm worried. And so anxiety is. Um, the response in the body, we feel it in our body, so we're sure that it's real. Mm -hmm. And what in fact it is, is fear. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I'm not going to have what I need. I'm afraid that you're not going to have what you need. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that things aren't going to go well in the future. You know? Yeah. But anxiety is not a virus. It's not in the air. You aren't catching it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a mindset. It's a mindset. I want to talk about... Um my recent anxiety attack that I had. And yes. I was, um, I had just talked to you. It literally, I may have talked to you, I literally talked to you the day before I was leaving. The day before it happened, I talked to you and I was just telling you like things that I was worried about. And you were like, Crystal, what are you worried about? What is the fear? Write down what, what, what you're worried about and let's talk about it. And it boiled down to um, fear of losing it all fear of not being able to um, keep up this life that I've built for myself because I've seen so many people be at the top of the mountaintop and just career booming and things going great and literally hit rock bottom. And I was like, God, I don't want that to be me, you know, and so many people depending on me and that gets really, really heavy. And something that stood out to me in that moment, you said, Crystal, you have everything you need and you lack nothing. And, and I was like, when I, we got the phone that day and I was like, I feel so much better. And within less than 24 hours, I landed in Los Angeles and it felt like somebody was literally squeezing my heart and it was pumping as hard as it could to keep pumping. And I was like, am I having a heart attack? What is happening right now? And um, my vision was blurred. Like I would be looking, if I was looking straight at you, you were moving. like. It was the craziest experience I had ever had. And um, I started looking up symptoms of a heart attack. Like I was looking up all these things. And I'm like, am I dying right now? Do I need to go to the hospital? And um, when it, I was pinpointing things, I was like, oh, that's not it. This isn't it. And then it was, the anxiety attack came up and I was like, wow, this is all, all the boxes checked off. I said, this is my first um, realized anxiety attack that I was having. And I got back and I told you about it and I was just like, I don't know what is happening. And it was just in that moment that I realized I've got to figure out how to deal with this. Can we talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, so the way that the body is designed, um, you know, God in his infinite wisdom made us in a way that we would be able to handle threats in our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's involuntary. We don't have a choice. If there's a perceived threat, whether it be saber tooth tiger or I'm going to lose it all, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. My, the mind says there's a threat and the body begins to go into an involuntary thing. It releases cortisol. It releases adrenaline from mm -hmm. the adrenaline 
glands, and it also releases epipenephrine. And now the body's under the influence of very strong chemicals. That's why you feel it in your chest, your mm-hmm. throat, your heart speeds up because you got a big adrenaline boost. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, you're ready to fight a saber-toothed tiger. You're ready to run or lift a car to get a child from underneath it. Your body is under, uh, it, it is ready to go, mm-hmm. but except it's not a real threat. So there's nowhere to put the energy your body has just given you. Mm. Yeah, there was nowhere to put it. I didn't know what was going on. And I, would, I tried to lay down to try to, and I tried breathing techniques. And I was like, just calm your, your heartbeat down, just calm down. And I was like, even when I laid down, it seemed like it started beating faster. I'm like, I'm trying to rest, you know, and trying to do things to take my mind off of it. And it was not stopping. And it lasted for hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's the, so now I'm anxious about being anxious. <laughs> yes, literally. Right? So, right? So that's what happens. And it's a continuum. Mm-hmm. It's a threat. I'm, I feel like I'm going to die. So now I'm releasing more of the same system mm-hmm. into my life, into yeah. my body. Right. And it, what does it do? It defers what it is you need to do that day. It delays purpose. It gets in the way of what it is that God intended for you to do that day. It just, it, it's a block. Now, it's perfect for real threats, but when you're in your mind and you don't have trust, the scripture you read, mm-hmm. like, I, gratitude is where you could be. I am so grateful for this opportunity and the opportunities that come behind it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that I have everything that I need and I lack nothing. What is there to worry you? That is so it powerful. Right now and the future. Right. That is so powerful. And um, I had to remind myself daily that I have everything I need. I lack nothing. And that's helped me so much um, since then. And can we talk about some of the things that when I told you about that, like, this, Crystal, you need, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to move past this. These are things you need to put into practice because I feel like a lot of people are living in a state of anxiety and they don't know how to deal with it. So um, if you could like talk, let's have that um, dialogue how we do when we're in the therapy sessions so that people can get the tools because I know what you've done for me has helped me tremendously. Even on the perspective of like digging deeper and understanding why, where this roots from, let's talk about that. Sure. Um... I really love that you read a scripture Mm -hmm. um, first. Um, It is very, very scary living a life, this life in this world, without knowing that you're going to be sustained, not really understanding what your source is. Mm -hmm. You know, being a human, you know that you're 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 limited. Mm -hmm. There's there's only so much you can do. There's so much that your mind can come up with. So. There has to be a source of power that I rely upon completely. And it can't be me. (laughs) And it can't be uh, my job because they're humans too. It can't be these things. So it has to be something greater than me. And uh, we are struggling because we don't have real, safe, and healthy ideas of God and our creator and our relationship to it. A lot of us are living in shame. We have taboo. We can't talk about the shame and doubt we have with our relationship with God. Our performance is not what we think it should be in order for God to really, really continue to bless us. Mm -hmm. We're simple kids, simple teenagers, and simple adults. We get this good thing and we think it's just luck. And because we can't turn our lives around in the secrets of our life, then we think it's just a matter of time before this God snatches it away. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's where the fear is. That's where a lot of the fear is. Yeah. I don't trust that I really deserve the thing that I have. I have a worth issue. Mm. So um, I I have to know that I'm good enough intrinsically. Not good enough on stage. Not look good enough. Intrinsically, I was good enough when I came to the planet when God created Mm. me. And I remain good enough. Yes. And that I'm never separate from this God. Doesn't matter what you call it, how you worship it, or what times you pay to it. Mm. It's just knowing that I am one with it always, no matter what my behavior is. And that's when you touched on that. That um, since a child, 
like one of the first scriptures I ever remember was, um, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right that your days may be long on the earth. And that is, it translated to me as a child, do what your mom and daddy tell you to do or you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't, and then it translates to, as an adult, it translates to, if I don't do what God says, like he's not going to bless me or things aren't going to happen for me. So like you, you do have that shame of the things that you've done as a kid, as an adult, um, and wondering like, is God ashamed of me? And you see that he's continuing to bless you. And you said, Crystal, God is not your magical genie in the sky. Like he's not like, okay, God, I'm going to do this right thing. And he's going to, gotcha. There's another blessing. He doesn't do that. And I thought about it. I was like, wow, you're right. And what you always, you say that God is like oxygen. Like he's just there. He's everywhere. When you're, when you having sex, when you shouldn't be, when you're in there watching porn, when you shouldn't be, God is there. And I'm the most shameful situations where you finish and you're like dang like I know I shouldn't have done that God is he's he's in he's everywhere he doesn't pick and choose the moments that he's going to be in and it's in the I would say for me it's in um just the trying to pursue a life a life of excellence and live you know saying practice excellence because the Bible always says practice excellence in all you do and we talked about me um, trying to be perfect all the time and portray this perfect life. And, and let's talk about that. We dug deeper and where that comes from. You asked me like, Crystal, where does that come from? Mm -hmm. And I had to think about, I was like, where does this whole thing I have to be perfect all the time come from? And when we got to the bottom of it, I realized it came from my childhood. And we talked about things I had been through in my childhood and it was the fear of getting in trouble. So I always felt like I had to be perfect. And it gets a little controversial because that's when you take it from the Bible, what the Bible says, how your parents translate it, how it's taught to you. And then that same fear like is put into you and it carries on to your entire life until you meet a Delana Zimmerman who's, who helps you unpack it and unlearn it and learn what the true meaning of that was. Yeah. And that was a very yeah, hard conversation. Imagine being a child where your mom is going to get you, daddy's going to get you, God's going to get you, the devil's going to get you, the boogeyman's going to get you. Of course, you have anxiety by the time you're 20, 30 years old. Everything's going to get you. Where's your safe place? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do you find refuge? Mm. You are not perfect. You can't pull it off. No one can. Mm -hmm. uh, we came to this life to live it, to learn in the living, mm -hmm. and to practice the lessons without mistakes, without falling short, what do we learn? We can't learn in only joy and bliss. Yeah. We learn right? in the mistakes and the failures. Yeah. That's right. We learn in the mess. Mm-hmm. Right? We learn in the mess. Because in the mess is where the nutrients are, right? People go out and buy poop. They go out and buy it to fertilize their grass. Yep. Because that's where the nutrients are. We learn and develop through the mess. Yes. We shouldn't be ashamed of the mess. You should learn from the mess. Yes. It takes humility to learn from the mess. It does. Mm. So if we're practicing perfection, which is like being in an abusive relationship, because you're never good enough, you're making up what good enough is in the first place. It's prideful because you're concerned about what other people are going to say. It's a projection that you give. You know, you, you think other people are seeing you in a particular way, so you have to pretend to be that. That's where this anxiety is coming from. Mm -hmm. You can't be your authentic self. You can't have flaws. Yeah. You can't make mistakes because you have no humility. Yeah. You have, that was another thing. So you have to be humble and have humility to be able to not try. I mean, if you're trying to be perfect, that is a very prideful and egotistic um, character trait. And it makes you deceptive and a liar. Mm-hmm. Because nobody's perfect. No. no. You have to hide everything. Mm-hmm. And it puts you in yeah. that shame-based place, that guilt-based place. And there's an anxiety that you're going to be found out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think um, because I live in my life is like under such a microscope, you see my, you, everything. And I can get like I have control over certain things, but a lot of things I don't have control over. And we live in such a judgmental world where sometimes I'm afraid to be like this myself that I am around my my closest friends. It's like I show the world a, a filtered crystal you know you see what I want you to see but I may not show you me drunk ass up face down twerking on a yacht 
you know, you might not see that side of me. Um, so I feel like that comes from like the fear of being judged, the fear of, oh, like she can't be a Christian and worship God and be doing those things. You know, like I am growing and getting stronger in my faith and my walk. And I feel like that looks different for everybody. You know, there are some people that like, literally like don't listen to secular music, um, don't have sex, don't um, hang in the wrong places. But I, you know what I'm saying, I listen to what I want to listen to, but I still wake up every morning, take my time with God, journal to God, listen to my church music, set the tone for the day. And when I get in my car, I may be listening to Jay-Z, you know? Um, and that doesn't make me less of a Christian than the next person, or it doesn't make me less of a person or less perfect, or like, I'm, nobody's perfect, but it doesn't make me, um, value, my value isn't less because I'm not living this rigid Christian life, you know, that we've been taught to live. Yeah, well, some people are living a rigid Christian life and are 200 pounds overweight. <laughs> so, I'm not talking about the sin of, you know, gluttony, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ooh, that's good. I mean, what? Mm -hmm. Which one is yeah, perfect? Right. You know, if we're if I have a thousand people in a room and mm -hmm. I ask everyone to close their eyes and consider God, close your eyes and consider God. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a thousand different considerations. Wow. Yeah. Be a thousand different images, a thousand different feelings. Mm -hmm. Because the relationship with God is personal. Nobody know why you came to this planet, mm -hmm. Crystal. Nobody knows why I came to this planet. Yeah. So anyone that's sitting from whatever seat they're in and judging what your experience should be is insane. <laughs> Who gave them the measuring stick? Mm -hmm. No one knows what your lessons are supposed to be yeah. when you came here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you'd have seen me 25 years ago, you'd think, oh my God, what a mess. But nobody understood that the mess was required. Yeah. Wow. The God mess was required. All things. Mm -hmm. For the good. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Of those. Yes. All things. Mm -hmm. So, mm. I say everyone have the experiences you need to have. Live this life. Learn what it is for you in the mess. And then practice the lessons in the next day. Yeah. And as you keep living, you have so many lessons that you've learned that you're now practicing, that you're now mastering. Mm -hmm. We came here to evolve this soul. We are not our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so to live your life only uh, based on the, how the world sees the image of your body mm -hmm. is insanity. Yeah. It's not even who you are. It's not. You have a body. Mm-hmm. You picked it up, yeah. and you're going to leave it here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you use the body to evolve the spirit and the soul while you're here. Mm -hmm. Again, you're never separate from God, ever. How can the creation be separate from the creator? Mm. Can't. You see it in the baby. When the yeah. baby's born and handed it, when the doctor hands the baby to the mother, mm -hmm. you say, oh, my Lord. My right? Lord, yes. That baby has, uh, on a scale of zero to 10, that baby is a 10. That baby is good enough, mm -hmm. divine. Yes. So when does the baby lose his value? When does your daughter lose her value? Mm. When does your son lose his value? Yeah. Does going around the sun make you lose your value, your oneness with God, mm. your divinity in, in God? Right. It doesn't. Nope. It does not. You don't lose your value. Yeah. You fall under the indoctrination that your value is outside of you. Mm. And the people who are teaching you, they believe their value is outside of them. Mm -hmm. And the people who taught them believe it. Right. If you go back far enough, you'll see where somebody handed somebody a lie version of God. Mm. Santa Claus God. Magical daddy, magical genie in the sky. <laughs> yep. Right? So good. And, you, and so then that's how we've lost our identity in Christ. That's how we've lost our oneness with God. That's how, that's how come we're afraid all day, every day mm -hmm. of what you think about me. No, the problem is what I think about myself. Yeah. If I have a low value concept of myself, I'm going to project my low value concept of myself onto you. Mm. I'm going to think that you think that thought about me and I'm going to feel insecure and anxious yes. and, and, and social anxiety and all these other things. Mm-hmm. 
But when I change my idea about myself based on what I know I am mm -hmm. and my oneness with God, I am good enough because God created me, sent me to this planet. I belong here. Mm -hmm. I, every room I walk in, I belong in. Every mm -hmm. experience I have is mine. Mm -hmm. This life is my journey. When I begin to stand in that truth, yes. I have everything that I need. I lack nothing. Then that's the idea that I project onto you. And so I know when you see me, mm -hmm. you see the one who sent me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Something I took away from that um, from that session was you said, Crystal, everything grows in shit. Everything. So if you're going through shit, grow through it. And I was like, oh, my goodness, because you don't think about um, like how you talk. You put that use the analogy like they take the cow manure for mulch to grow plants, to grow veggies. Everything grows in shit. And I was like, I didn't even think of it like that. And it's in the mess that we grow. And I just, I love that, um, that analogy that you used. Um, I want to get into some statistics. Um, it says that statistics prove that anxiety disorders are the most common mental health disorder in the United States. Data shows that for black women, anxiety is more chronic and the symptoms are more intense than their white counterparts. Why do you feel that black women are the ones that are experiencing anxiety? I know some obvious reasons why black women are experiencing anxiety over white female parts. I mean, white, white female parts over white, uh, over our white counterparts. But um, why do you feel that? Well, we cannot ever ignore or evade blackness in America. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, we all come from descent from enslavement, whether it was Latino, Afro-Latino, mm -hmm. Afro-Caribbean, Afro-American. It doesn't matter. There's a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a thing that happened. Yeah. So um, in this country, we are like the stress of what our beauty is mm -hmm. because we're in, we're in patriarchy. We're swimming in it. Yeah. It's, it's an odorless, colorless gas. So not only is it patriarchy, it's white patriarchy. And so we are, we don't, our beauty is compared mm -hmm. to something that we're not, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, we have to be careful not to be, we're so strong, right? One of the conditions of enslavement made us the strongest on the plantation, not mm -hmm. physically, but emotionally. Yes. We had to watch our children be taken from us. We had to watch our men be, uh, breed other women. We had to watch so much and the way that the slave was made was through the woman mm. when the woman became docile enough mm -hmm. then slavery could continue so she had to be strong she had to teach her daughters to be strong because mm -hmm. she can't rely upon what her life is going to be looking for a man yeah. she has to teach her daughters to be strong because her sons may be killed mm. so she has to teach her she still has to teach her daughters you got to get it for yourself. You can't rely upon anybody. So she has to be strong. Oh, yeah. It's just you and God. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. message is still being taught from the plantations yeah. of North America mm -hmm. to South Central Los Angeles, yeah. where I live. And so, of course, I'm anxious because I can get in the workplace. I can get in the career place where a black man can't even get. And then I have to be this thing mm -hmm. that code switches all the time and come home and potentially raise my children by myself. Yeah. Just because of the conditions we can look at, right? The uh, pipeline, prison pipeline is a real thing. Yes. The crack epidemic really decimated the black families. Mm -hmm. it, it happened. That, that's yeah. still a thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's so many variables mm -hmm. as to why I'm afraid that I have one uh, emergency from poverty, from mm. homelessness, from my car note not being paid. Mm. I hope this man is the man so I can finally be whole and wow. have value and get married. Mm -hmm. Like we should have gave me. But, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, I can go on yeah. and on and on as to why she struggles. No, that that is so good. And I feel like it is like a generational curse that we have to break. Like it's generation of, and that's with a lot of things that we still deal with today, trying to figure it out, like the, the root of it. And it goes that far back and even further. Oh, and even further. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we're talking about comparative to a counterpart in America, mm -hmm. black women are only married 
27, 30 percent of the time, whereas mm. white women are married 70 percent of the time. Mm. So if we just look at those stats, that means that potentially I'm a black woman who uh, is working hard. Mm -hmm. I may be single parenting or I may be alone mm -hmm. and I may be fornicating. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I have this magical daddy God in the sky who's judging me. And I'm just trying to get on the right path. Yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm anxious because I can't, I don't have access and the entitlement to access to what other people have yeah. access to. Mm -hmm. You know, young white boys are taught to marry. They are. Young white girls are taught to do the same thing and be ready. And be ready. Mm -hmm. And to have resources when they get to the wedding. Right. Right. That part. So, of course I'm anxious. Yeah. Wow. Research and history tells us that there are three basic images that exist. The strong black woman, which we talked about, the angry black woman, and the Jezebel video vixen. A strong black woman is hard on herself, all while striving for perfection, even when she knows she should stop placing her mental and physical health at risk. I feel like I'm in the strong black woman category right now at this phase of my life um, where I was striving for perfection. And something that you said that was so profound to me in the last session was that, Crystal, perfection is like a cancer. Stop trying to be perfect. Start pursuing excellence because with excellence, you can make mistakes and learn and grow from it. And I was like, wow, that was powerful because I was I didn't realize that I was trying to be perfect all the time. And but I am I'm like I do everything myself like I was I have to, you know, it's like who else is going to do it? Nobody else is here. It's all on me. And it gets hard. You know, it gets really hard trying to do everything myself and not having someone else to lean on. And I feel like a lot of black women feel like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and an epidemic. It is. It is an epidemic. And for me um, personally, I have so much going on and I don't have all the help that I need. Like when it comes to like day to day stuff and personal stuff. And it got to a point where I was like super stressed out. Like, how am I going to handle all this? And in the midst of all that, then an audition comes. And I got to stop what I'm doing and mentally prepare for this, tap into a whole different person, you know, and then tap back into myself. And it's like, it's really hard. Um, and so how does she take care of herself? How does she manage her mental health? Mm. What is her mental health? Where yeah. does she feel it in her body? Mm -hmm. Is she using her old skill sets that she's suppressed and compartmentalizing? Because mm -hmm. that's what right? I would do, yeah. I'm allowed to feel weak or sad or... I don't have time. I go on. Mm -hmm. can't, who, you, who can you tell that to? Right. Now I have you. But <laughs> before, I literally was suppressing everything. And... Um, and that came from my childhood of the whole, there's something in the black family, not, I can't speak for um, white households, but there's something in the black family where what happens in this house stays in this house. I don't care what just happened. You go out there and you put a smile on your face. Don't be telling our business. Don't talk about it. So you learn at a very young age. I don't care if you just got your ass beat. When you, we walk out of the house, you better put a smile on your face like nothing ever happened. I don't care if I just cussed you out or slapped the shit out of you. You better walk out here and smile like nothing happened and keep our business in this house. And that in turn turned into suppressing anything that was hurting me because I couldn't well, talk also about it. delivers the message that it, what you're experiencing doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... You know, children who did not get their emotional needs met mm -hmm. become adults that did not get their emotional needs met. Mm. And we did not learn language to express how we felt. We weren't allowed. Just gratitude. You just better be grateful. I brought you home from the hospital. You better be grateful. I feed you. Mm -hmm. like, the, like, just grateful. And a lot of times we... We were, what we experienced as love was provision. Wow. I don't really care mm -hmm. for you. I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't find out what that is inside of you. It makes us grow up in a family of strangers. They don't know us. Yeah. They know we look like they know us on our report card. They know what we do well. Mm -hmm. They know what we do, don't do well. Yeah. They don't know us. They don't know our hearts. Mm -hmm. They don't. And I, I expressed to you um, how nobody knew this until I really started to open up about my childhood, that there were moments where I wanted to commit suicide. And my parents still to this day don't know that. 
You know, like I've never talked about it. It wasn't something like, how are you feeling? How is this affecting you? Like therapy wasn't, and we did go to family therapy um, because I went through a phase in my life where I was very um, rebellious. And I think it was a, a point for me where I had gone through so much at a young age that when I got a little old enough, I was like, I'm not taking this shit no more. And it was like an act of rebellion where like, I was just like not having it. And it, from their point of view, it looked like this is just a badass child, you know, and the threats of like, I'm sending you to boarding school, like you need some discipline, you need something different. And it was more of an act of um, one defense, but also an act of I'm putting my foot down, you know? And so that's how you become or we become the angry black woman. Hell yeah, we're mad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who knew us at what point in our lives? Mm -hmm. Did anybody know us? Yeah. See us, honor us, protect us, cover us, mm -hmm. make it safe for us to think, feel, emote, be, become ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, a lot of us, just replicas of brokenness. Mm hmm. Oh. Mm. We don't know how to say it. We're avoiding disappointment. You know, seeking pleasure and avoiding punishment, like you talk about, mm -hmm. you know, avoiding punishment. The perfectionism comes out of avoiding punishment. Yeah. You know, and so then I avoid punishment. I seek pleasure and that becomes my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know how to be in a relationship with people. Our vulnerability becomes lost. Yes. Um, we call it trust issues. But it's really, I lack the ability to be intimate with people because I don't trust I don't ever want to feel disappointment again. I don't ever want to feel a broken heart again. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to say, people that are listening, yeah. it's okay to feel negative emotion. Yeah. It's okay mm -hmm. to feel disappointment. It perfects you. Yeah. It's okay to feel frustration. It mm -hmm. perfects you. It's okay to feel all of the things you need to feel in your living. Mm. It perfects you, it evolves you, it stretches you, it turns you into the thing that God intended. You're going to be able to use it later when you deliver your gift. It gives you resiliency, power, depth, texture, breath. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't wow. avoid, you won't know yourself. Yeah. Get in relationships so you can mirror yourself and find out what it is in you that needs to evolve, grow, and become. Yeah. Lean into difficult places mm -hmm. so, that, so you can perfect your gift while you're here on the planet and so yeah. that the world is better because you're in it. Wow. Do not run from your story. Make peace with your story. Oh, that was good. Your mama now, your daddy now, make mm. peace with it. Yeah. The molestation, the rape, make peace with it. Mm. You do not have to live from a narrative of, uh, um, you know, disease mm -hmm. and brokenness and always you know, I'm always healing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will always be evolving, becoming, and healing. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to live from the dark place. Yeah. The darkness was purposeful. You're out of it now. Mm -hmm. Walk in the light. Walk in it. Okay. Yeah. Something that you said earlier was that um, I have a worth issue when I talk about my fear of losing it all. Um, can you expand on that? Like, what do you mean when you say I have a worth issue? So, um, Growing up in a family where what you think and feel doesn't matter mm -hmm. creates a worth issue. Does that, you, can you see it? Mm -hmm. I don't matter. I don't care what I think. Nobody asked me what's for dinner or where we're going on vacation. It's like you don't matter. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. That's one variable. Mm -hmm. The other variable is not understanding that you belong to God, period. Like mm -hmm. full stop. That your value on a scale of zero to 10 is 10. It's never seven. It's never 11. Mm -hmm. There are no 11s. Yeah. There's only 10 and good enough. If you don't recognize that you're good enough, then you're going to feel that you're less than good enough, mm -hmm. which means, you're right? I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A nine is not good, good enough. enough. Yeah. Wow. So I have my, 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 I have to set my dial always to good enough. Mm -hmm. So if I am less than that, then I have a worth issue. I don't know my value. I don't know my worth. Right. And here's the, here's the, here's the linchpin. From age birth to 12, 
way that the brain works is it's just recording information. You can't negotiate it. Mm -hmm. You don't have what's called abstract thinking yet. So mm -hmm. just take the world as it is. The way that you see life is greater than, less than, and equal to, mm -hmm. period. Okay. That's the logic of a child. Okay. Right. Right? So if I believe at home I'm not good enough because I have this relationship with my mother or my sibling or my dad, mm -hmm. if I believe that I'm not good enough in the classroom because I can't raise my hand and answer the question on the board or that I peed on myself, for God's sake, or, mm -hmm. you know, or if I don't feel like I'm good enough on the yard in elementary school because I'm not good at tetherball or I'm being bullied, mm -hmm. right? Or I don't have friends. Right. Then that is, that is a, a, in my program. I literally don't think I'm good enough. And then I turn 12, go to junior high school. And so now I'm trying to cover up with a mm. veneer. This is I'm not good enough. Wow. I try to cover it up with achievement, you know, doing well in school, sexy, mm -hmm. smoke weed, drinking alcohol, athleticism. I got to cover up I'm not good enough with something. Mm -hmm. Violence. Yeah. Mm. I'm 12. When do, if I don't get any treatment or therapy or discover my actual worth, yeah. then I am using my veneer for the rest of my life wow. until I'm not good enough continues to pop through and I keep trying to cover it with drugs, alcohol, sex, shopping, and Gucci. Don't do that. Don't come for me. Because <laughs> I do. Like I have a bad habit of, um, of sh doing retail therapy. Like That's a real thing. I really do that. And I'll go and Send all this money on clothes, and then it, I'm happy for like that moment. And then I go to my closet, I'm like, I have nothing to wear. And then I'm not good and, enough. And I'm so. not good enough. It's like, yeah. You gotta cover it for the next day. Mm hmm. So, what we're trying wow. to do is shift the mindset from I'm not good enough to I am good enough every day, no matter what's happening. Mm hmm. Uh, learning how to forgive ourselves for choices that we make that are not in our best interest. Mm hmm. That's doing good. our best to forgive ourselves after we do it again. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's really about self love, loving myself, mm -hmm. connecting to the inner child who did not have anyone to connect to them. Mm -hmm. Loving myself, forgiving myself, make, taking accountability, taking care of my emotional needs, yeah. not looking for someone in the world to take care of them for me, which leaves us desperate and codependent. Mm -hmm. So really, really build a healthy relationship with God. Seeing God as a loving uh, continuum, always present, all the time sustaining you, whether you're aware of it or not. You can't negotiate it. It won't withhold it from you. Mm. It, it just, even in your sleep, in your sin, in, in your drunkenness, mm. in everything, God is sustaining. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just really, really having a healthy relationship with God mm -hmm. will allow you to have a healthy relationship with yourself, a healthy yes. relationship in the world. That's so good. Your career. Yeah, no, it's so true. Your partners. <laughs> right. And I think something that um, Christians forget, the world puts so much emphasis on certain sins. It's just a very few sins that they put so much emphasis on. But there's so many sins that God is like, no, this is a sin too. You know, like lying is a sin. But if you go kill somebody, the world's like, oh, that's really bad. But in God's eyes, it's the same thing. He's like, it's no big sin or little sin. So some people look like, well, I lie or I eat too much, but you out here fornicating, so you going to hell, you know? And like, we've been taught certain things and we forget, and we we see people that we look up to as kids lying or being like, look, don't tell them that we going here. And you learn to lie at a very young age and learn to think that, oh, well, that's not a sin. Like I've been raised to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's what everybody does. But if I go have sex, before marriage, then I'm sinning. You know what I'm saying? That's a real sin. Or if I go kill somebody, which, you know, I'm just showing like it's- Well, these are the things that break our hope. Mm -hmm. It breaks our hope at a very young age that we'll ever be good enough for God. Yeah. It's the way that the church teaches these things. And I know the church is trying to protect us, mm -hmm. trying to have us make our best choices. Yes. You know, the church is trying to really protect the life of the person so that there's no salvation. I mm -hmm. get it. I was raised very Pentecostal, you mm -hmm. know? And, but what happened is it almost broke my spirit. It almost caused me to kill myself because mm. I was never good enough for God and never good enough for the idealized Christian perception. Uh, nobody's pulling it off. Everybody lying. I'm telling you that straight up now. Um, I talk to a lot of people mm -hmm. and everybody is like, 
if this supposed to be this, then how come I'm that? And it's like, that's not real. Yeah. That is not a real thing. It is a, it is a guide. It, it is, it is a, it is what you want to compare or, you know, let that be your a standard. It is your standard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in this life, you have this body. Yeah. You have this body and we are indoctrinated with a major lie about pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. Wow. I- I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. Do your best every day. Mm-hmm. Learn more in the word about what the standard is and practice spiritual principles. If you practice spiritual principles like honesty, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Like hope, mm-hmm. like faith, like courage, like justice. Mm. Right, brotherly love. Mm-hmm. Right, your life will be better if you practice admission and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Your life will be better. The lessons that you need to learn every day in order to forgive someone, mm-hmm. right? You have to have the situation in order to forgive. Yeah. The person has to fall short of the mark in order to get forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Like we can't practice spiritual principles if everybody's perfect. Oh, that's a nugget. That's good. So let's let that go. Take yourself off the hook. Mm -hmm. And let yourself be human. Yeah. Let this version of life grow, evolve, and become without you killing it with cortisol, adrenaline, and epipenephrine. Mm -hmm. Your body can't handle it. You're going to have high blood pressure, diabetes. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a sin. Yeah. So... If I don't trust God, and this is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. I talk about faith, hallelujah, amen, Jesus, I'm on the front row, I'm paying all my tithes. Mm-hmm. But I don't have a real relationship with a God that sustains. I don't have, I have doubt and prejudice with God. So when I'm worried, I eat. Mm-hmm. Now I weigh 325 pounds and I have high blood pressure and diabetes. Mm-hmm. Where's the sin? In the doubt and in the gluttony. It's in the mm-hmm. doubt, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't believe that I have everything that I need. I lack nothing. Yeah. So I'm eating to calm the anxiety in the body. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. Because that's what it does. Food will do, food will do that. Mm-hmm. And so now this is my new process. This is how I handle life. Yeah. Am I taking care of the body that God gave me? No. Right. So how... You see, like, it's the same thing as mm. if I doubt and I don't trust God and I have sex. Mm-hmm. I doubt and I don't trust God and I shop. I doubt and I don't trust God, right? Mm-hmm. And I over-exercise. Or I doubt I don't trust God and all I do is work. I don't do nothing else. Yeah, It's all the same thing. And we can call it sin, but it's really the opportunity for us to trust God, to connect to our oneness with God. That's the sin, mm. duality. Mm-hmm. Believing that I am not one with God. Believing that there's some power, we can call it the devil if you want to, that is that 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 there's God and something else. There's mm-hmm. just God. Mm. God can't be all powerful except for where the devil stand. God can't be everywhere present at the same time except for where the devil stand. Right. God can't be all knowing and all, you know, all these omnipotence and all these omni things, mm-hmm. omni action, <laughs> except for where the devil stand. Wow. You I'm are... the only devil I ever met. <laughs> Ain't that it? Wow. Ain't no dude in a red suit ever popped off in my life. Yeah. It has only been my thinking Mm. and my separation. The idea that I am separate from God because of my behavior. I realize God sent us all to this planet and we cannot be separate. You can see it in the tree. Is the tree separate from God? No. Is the ant separate from God? Mm -mm. Is the hawk separate from God? Is my dog separate from God? No. I can see it in everything else that's on me. Mm Mm-hmm. That means there's something wrong with my mindset. Yeah. So, Crystal, if we go back to the original thing we talked about, anxiety is a mindset. And it is the mindset that I am separate from God, that wow. I do not have access to the power, that God is not my source. I tap into the world as my source, but it can't be. No. God is my source. Yeah. All the time, no matter what. No matter what, if I'm crying about the last man, you yes, understand what I'm yes. saying? God is my source. Yeah. Wow. So that is the basis of anxiety. And I don't care who you are or what part of the world you live in. Mm-hmm. So for people, because I know for me, I um I didn't know what the signs of anxiety were. 
can you like tell us a few of the signs that where people can be like, okay, this, that, where they can pinpoint, oh, I'm dealing with anxiety right now. Well, it's it's like fullness in the throat mm-hmm. is where it happens for many people. Uh, increased heart rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to call it like the roller coaster in your stomach. Mm. Perspiration on your hands is another way we experience it. Mm-hmm. And it's tightness in the body, shoulders. Of women really carry a lot. Here. I do. My massage therapist, I was like, girl, what is going on? Like, she has to work so long on my shoulders because I hold it's so in the, much stress. In the body and in the fat mm. cells. Because remember, all those chemicals have been released in the body. Mm-hmm. And it is absolutely affecting your blood vessels, mm. kidneys, and causing adrenal fatigue. You are going to kill yourself mm. not connected to God with, with a mindset that you are not connected to God. Mm-hmm. So easy, practical ways when you begin to notice anxiety, don't let, you can't let it build up Mm. when you begin to notice it. Mm -hmm. You want to ask yourself, oh, observe it. Not my anxiety. You don't have to own it and get it a doggy bag. Mm -hmm. Start observing anxiety, the anxiety. Oh, I feel the fullness in my throat. Ask yourself, what am I afraid of? It's time for us to begin to get language mm. around what we think and feel, mm-hmm. getting rid of, I feel some kind of way, and starting to be very specific and precise about how about we feel. what it is we're feeling. That's good. It is courageous to identify what it is you're afraid of. Mm-hmm. It is not weak. It is courage. I am afraid right, that they are not going to accept me. Mm-hmm. It is, it is an, a mature way of knowing who you are, giving language to what it is you're feeling. We weren't allowed to do that in our childhood, Mm -hmm. and it's time to develop it now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're the only one that knows. Yeah. Stop being a grown person talking about, I don't know what I feel. I don't know. No. Make it up. You know. Put some, configure some words together Mm -hmm. and give it language. That's how you take the power out of it. Mm. I'm afraid they're not going to accept me. So what's the truth? Yeah. What am I afraid of? What's the truth? I have everything that I need. I lack nothing. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Exhale. Again, deep breath. Hold it. Exhale. And repeat for as long as you need to, and it will clear and move that thing, the adrenaline. It it, mm. it dilutes yeah. the chemicals in the bloodstream, the deep breathing, mm-hmm. so that it's not as strong. Yeah, even those breaths, it doesn't feel as strong. Yeah, it doesn't feel strong. So mm-hmm. notice, become self aware, people. Yes, my throat's and my stomach. What am I afraid of? Look, look, examine yourself. Mm-hmm. Scan yourself for the truth. Mm-hmm. Know yourself. Yeah. We're talking about knowing of the mind. That's what we're doing right here. Yeah. Uh, and it does. What like, I'm afraid of. Is it true? Question it. Yes. Affirm the truth. Mm-hmm. I have everything that I need. I lack nothing. Mm-hmm. I don't need them to accept me. I need to accept me. Let me walk into this room. Wow. Yeah. It's so good. Breathe to move the body and walk in the room. Walk in the room. I love that. And ever since you've made me look in the mirror and really pinpoint what those issues are, I'm able to have clarity. I'm able to move differently. And my perspective is different. It really is. And I tell people that since I've been talking to you that um, therapy has become something that is more popular than it has been in the past, especially in the Black community. And I'm always like, no, like it really works. When you get the right one, you ha- you may have to go through a few to find your one, but when you get with the right one, it changes everything. It really does. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Right now, it's my favorite part of the show. It's called Positive Outcomes, where our listeners write in to us and ask for advice. And um, for this week, she says, hi, Crystal. You've inspired me to continue to dream and to work them into reality. I am 21 years old, first generation college junior. I've been having trouble finding my rhythm in life and just balancing good mental and physical health. 
I went to college over a thousand miles from home and I only and the only support system I've ever known. I battled with depression, suicidal ideations, the anxiety while being a full-time student and working full-time. This past year, I've taken the time to get to know myself and find things I love. However, I am now unpacking some things I haven't healed from in my childhood. Ooh. And I want to seek professional counseling, but I'm afraid of what I may unpack. I'm currently in a good mental space. Do you have any advice on just taking that leap of faith to seek help? And how do you remain positive and faithful when it seems like your back is against the wall? Ooh, um, for me, I know that, I'll tell you this, um, there were times where I thought I was in a good mental space because I got so good at suppressing things. But if you're finding that um, even having fear that when you talk to someone that you're gonna unpack some things that you may not be ready to, that's when you know you need to talk to somebody because you're holding on to something that is is pushing you down. It's probably holding you back from progressing. And sometimes when you are pulled away from your safety net, because you said you were pulled away from your support system, that's the time that God can really work on you without the influences of the people that you're used to getting advice from all the time. So um, I would say definitely lean into getting therapy, seeking help. And um, yeah, I know it's helped me. So that's what I would say. What about you, Dr. Delano? Uh, that um, letter was everything that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Everything that we talked about. Yeah. She's on the precipice of her successful life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But she's got all that stuff that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. I always encourage getting help. Yeah. Um, teasing out the stories that you continue to play in your mind. Mm -hmm. Once you say them out loud, then they have different meaning. You can organize them in a way that won't it won't annihilate you to hear your story out loud. Yes. In fact, it'll help give you another perspective. Mm -hmm. I you love cannot it. Uh, heal from the mind where the problem exists. Like you have to do it at another level. So yeah. absolutely seek the professional help. Get a culturally competent therapist mm. that you don't have to explain things to um, that understands the nature of the black family and sometimes how the mother is emotionally unavailable. Um, so it's your opportunity uh, to set a foundation that you'll be able to springboard the rest of your life from. Oh, love that. That is so good. Um, now we're going to do what I'm going through and what I'm growing through. And for me in this season of my life, especially as it pertains to um, therapy and unpacking a lot of things from my childhood and into my adulthood, I would say that I am going through unpacking some very um, hurtful things and learning to release those things. And I'm also growing through having um, empathy and understanding that everything that happened to me was for a reason. And, and having that empathy for myself and the people that may have inflicted that on me. Um, and also growing through the idea that I have to be perfect and practicing excellence instead of perfection. Yeah, that's very powerful. Um, I love what you said. Uh, this is one of my models is that nothing is happening to you. Everything is happening for you. Mm -hmm. um, it takes me back to the thing we mentioned earlier that no one knows why you came to this planet. It is being revealed to you day by day, mm -hmm. lesson by lesson, experience by experience. Uh, conversation with the Holy Spirit and you're continuing to be given the information that you need as to why you came to this planet and what your next steps are. Mm -hmm. So lean into your stories of the past, let their information yeah. to help you understand the areas in your life that need to heal, evolve and grow, how to use that piece mm -hmm. or an asset so that it doesn't remain a liability. Oh, wow. I love it. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. so good. Do you have um, anything that you're going through and growing through? Um, yeah, absolutely. I've, <laughs> it's constant for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one, I'm on the uh, I'm in the publishing process um, for this book that I wrote 13 years ago. Wow! And the reason why it's taken me 13 years to publish it is because I felt I played small. Mm. Play small for 13 years wow. um, in a particular relationship. And it wasn't until 
Uh, I had many situations, health situations, the ending of the relationship that I decided to be obedient and listen to the still small voice. And the book is in publishing right now. Like I'm about to push the print button in a moment. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. <laughs> I love that. 13 years. Wow. 13 years of evolution to get to this point. But this version of me is a version of me yes. that needs to stand in front of the words that I put on paper. So when I, I encourage and self love mm -hmm. and uh, taking responsibility for my place on the planet and in life is the things that I'm growing from. I love that. Congratulations. Are you able to tell us the name of the book? Uh, the name of the book is Do These Wings Make Me Look Fat? Ah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. It's um, an unapologetic approach to um, spirituality mm -hmm. and positive mental health. I love it. I can't wait to read it. I love that. I love it. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. So um, the last thing we do is um, keep it blank, sweetie. And we fill in the blank and I'll start off. I'm going to say for this one, keep it excellent and not perfect, sweetie. Mm. That's what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> mm. For this one, I'd love to say, uh, keep it peaceful mm. and not chaotic, sweetie. I love that. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. I know it's going to bless so many people and help a lot of people. Um, I'm grateful to have you in my life. So I just wanted to share you with the world for a minute. And thank you for allowing me to do that. I really appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> guys, you. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys for joining. If you want to write in, please write in to our positive outcomes at keepitpositivesweetie at gmail.com. Make sure you stay tuned. We have more great things coming. I'll see you guys soon. You can follow me on all platforms at Love Chris Renee. That is L U V Crystal Renee. And Miss Delana, do you have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or anywhere that they can find you or contact you if they need help? Because people need help. <laughs> well, there's two places. Um, I have my website. It's Delana Zimmerman Therapy. Uh, dot com and that's d-e-l-e-n-a and of course on instagram at delana zimmerman therapy awesome please tap in with you guys i promise you you will not regret it guys thank you so much again we'll see you next week and in the meantime you know what to do keep it positive sweetie